right, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to today's webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Jeff Gibby. I'll be uh, tasked with the uh, um, helping you get into the room, reading our legal disclaimer, and um, introducing our guest today, uh, which is Kirk Northington. So welcome. Appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, today we have a very, very uh, fun class. Um, uh, we've had a pretty successful add-on called MetaSwing that's been available for roughly, I want to say, uh, two to three years now, but Kirk would probably remember better. Um, and uh, we've made some, uh, uh, or Kirk, I should say, has made some modifications and some changes and some updates to it. So we're pretty excited to kind of see what they are and uh, introduce them to you and, uh, and let you see them as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get straight to business. Uh, as you know, um, probably by now, I'm going to read something. Today's workshop is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented at the workshop should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Equus in Northington Trading shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Uh, so that, um, that's the legal disclaimer. Uh, our lawyers will be happy now. Um, I want to kind of introduce you to, to those of you, and uh, it looks like from the polling question I put up earlier, um, a lot of you don't use MetaSwing, but it's been a very, very popular add-on for us. Um, and it's one of those ones where, where Kirk came to me and he, he showed me kind of what he developed and designed into MetaStock, and I, I thought it was very, very cool. <laughs> so we went ahead and uh, we released it as an add-on a few years ago. Um, we've done exceptionally well with it. I think um, it's been very, very well received and well reviewed. And um, and, and the person that introduced me and, and started to talk to me about this add-on, his name is Kirk Northington, who I've uh, come to know as a very, very uh, smart individual um, who's done a lot of work in the markets. And uh, so we're very, very proud of the product. I'm really interested. I personally um, don't have much to do with the day-to-day -day operation of the MetaSwing product anymore. Uh, so I, I'm pretty interested to see what he has to say and what he's done with the product. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to get out of the way, as they say, and, uh, and let him take over and kind of show it to us. Thank you, Jeff. First of all, let me ask if uh, everyone can hear me uh, re relatively clearly. I'm going to assume that you can. And uh, Jeff, it's nice to hear that uh, that you think I'm smart. Um, I know you've called me a mad scientist and a few other things, but you know, smart that's 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 a real step up. So appreciate that. Um, yes, I did start with MetaStock. Early on, um, it was actually my first programmable charting package, and it's what I originally developed all of my uh, my tendencies and strategies in. And originally, I developed uh, MetaStock, excuse me, MetaSwing, strictly in MetaStock. Um, it's a program that I love. It's what I still use to do uh, almost all of my development in. Um, crazy mad scientist, yes. Um, and and not only that, but I love it for a lot of reasons. It's it's really good to do um, a lot of math really quickly. And most charting packages out there can't do math very fast. They're relatively slow, but Metastock has got that part of the market cornered. And the type of software tools that I develop use math very heavily. So let's go ahead and get into it here. First of all, what I believe is that money is made at the extremes, picking highs and picking lows. That is what my software attempts to do. It typically does not attempt to find follow through and things such as that. However, um, you know, it's not to say that you can't do it, do that with MetaSwing. It's just that MetaSwing is primarily designed to, um, to identify extremes, highs and lows, and under the cover, under the hood, we're using volatility measurement. We're using arithmetic um, that most of us learned in high school, and it's, it's very good for measuring extremes. Now, this month in April, uh, we were reviewed for the second time in technical analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine. 
Um, one of the things that they like about uh, Metastock and Metaswing is that it is mathematically and statistically oriented and proven. Um, actually, I found out uh, the, the reviewer there, the principal reviewer, David Peterson, is actually a math major. So he picked up on that really well. Now, tonight's agenda, we're going to look at the things that are new in Metaswing version 4. We originally launched with Metaswing version 3.5 in September of 2009. Um, so tonight, what's been changed and what's been added is that we've replaced the entire uh, trend sensing indicators with uh, a much better and more, um, I would say, statistically proven trend tool. Okay, And with that, uh, we used it in the algorithms to produce our first mechanically driven system trades for Metaswing. And there are two of those. It's the Adeo long system and the 123 long system. Then we're going to show you the um, statistical performance of it. And at the end, we're going to get to live charts. So let's get moving because we've got a lot, of, lot to look at. I made a lot of charts, but uh, I don't know that you know, we'll actually look at them all. I've got a lot of them just in case. So um, goal. We wanted to make Metaswing simpler and make it better. By simpler, um, take a little bit of the analysis out of it and help you to find very um, obvious places to trade. And in that, we did that in both the trend tool and the uh, and the the, um, the the both of the mechanical systems. The primary method that we've used to do this um, this new version is we're using a lot of historical testing. Uh, in a statistically valid method, which helps you achieve very, a very high degree of self-honesty because you're testing across a large quantity of, uh, of stocks. And so you're, you're coming up with tools that work in, um, in very broad ways that are very uh, robust. So you're avoiding curve fitting to specific uh, issues. Okay, Metaswing's capabilities include directional signals, uh, ADEOs and, and 123s, and exit signals and such, uh, support and resistance, which is based on volatility. That's been one of the things that we pretty much invented is volatility-based support and resistance. And trend compensated overbought oversold indication. Uh, what was upgraded in version four is the trend system, which we'll be looking at tonight, and the uh, mechanical trading systems. So this is an important thing to understand. The trend system in Metaswing is designed to help you trade the extremes profitably. It isn't necessarily designed to help you jump on the trend and just sit until the indicator goes to the opposite direction. It's designed to help you choose the extremes um, and, and trade on the right side of the market. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, this is the Metaswing screen just showing the trend system at the bottom here. It consists of two things. The intermediate trend ribbon, which is shown as the bull and bear ribbon right here, bulls and bears, and beneath it is the swing filter. Okay. That's what's beneath it. The swing filter or uh, swing trade filter will always be the same color as the top, or it will be white, which is neutral or weakness. Okay. And what these these two tools do is the intermediate tells you what the intermediate trend direction is, uh, and and that would be you know the the intermediate trend is is typically you know, six weeks to, to nine weeks long, that, that's generally what people will define an intermediate trend. So, you know, um, month and a half to three or four months long, that sort of thing. But this tool, you know, helps you to predict further, um, forecast further uh, in about that time range. Then the swing filter underneath is for strength or weakness. And what I mean by this is Let's take a look at October of 2010. 
right here where my arrow is. We have an uptrend. We don't really see much what's going on back there. But then here we start to get white space. And that tells me that the trend may start to get a little bit weak. And, and, and certainly there we have a little trend weakness that develops into a pullback. The trend continues on and then develops into uh, a little bit of a bear, uh, bearish activity but resumes as an uptrend. However, we get some indication that this bearish activity is beginning to show some weakness because the trend tool turns white as well as the filter underneath and that lines up right in here. And sure enough, the trend reverses on us. Okay, Up it goes and then our, our uh, swing filter here starts to show weakness and gives us indication that this trend is beginning to show weakness. And sure enough, shortly thereafter, it begins to come to an end. Okay. And on we go into a little bearish phase, and then back up into uh, trend mode again, into uptrend. But that is the relationship. The top bar is for the intermediate trend. The bottom, which is actually plotted as a little histogram, okay, uh, actually will tell you the strength, whether something is strong or is starting to get um, weak. Now let's go forward and look at a few examples of this in use. Here we are with a chart of uh, Akamai. It took me a long time to realize how to, um, how to pronounce that. I used to pronounce it all kind of ways. Um, but Akamai, I've blanked out most of the chart so we can follow the trend indicator forward. Here, at this point, we have a, a, a trend, an intermediate trend, and a strength indication. And we have price activity showing extreme strength. Next, we have no change for quite some time. And that tells us that when we see extremes, uh, we can trade them with the odds in our favor. Here at the bottom is the primary overbought, oversold indicator for Metaswing. This line right here is for oversold. The dash line is for overbought. The zero line represents the extreme. So when the blue comes down, drops below zero, I know I have a true trend compensated oversold circumstance. Okay, That corresponds to these little blue dots up here. So we find good trend entry system points. At the same time we're seeing a good strong trend in place. Okay. Once again we have another extreme here. We even have a, a, an Adeo system trade that I'm going to show you in a little while. And um, so we've got some, some decent trading there. Things are looking good. Okay. Now let's go forward again. Okay, we've moved forward a couple of weeks. And if you can see right here, we've got the swing filter going white. In other words, there's some possible weakness going on. Price has done a pretty big dip there. Okay. So if you, uh, even if you didn't have the trend tool, you'd probably notice some weakness with that. But we're just going to isolate the trend tool here. Okay? So we've got some possible weakness. However, the intermediate trend is still pointing uh, bullish. And that doesn't mean that the trend is over because we start to see weakness. It usually indicates that you're going to start to see some weakness develop, you know, in the coming couple of weeks or a few weeks. Okay? either sideways trading action or a reversal. Now we're going to move forward a little bit further and we can see what has happened. That white space here continued. We even got a slightly uh, bearish reading on the intermediate just briefly. And then price began to show some more strength. We turned back to an intermediate um, trend but our, our strength just is, is not there. Personally, I like to see, you know, four to five days on a daily chart where my swing filter 
is uh, is solid. That tells me I've got some strength building. Okay. In retrospect, once we start started to see these um, this weakness forming here, you know, uh, that tells us something. But it doesn't tell us that we can't trade it, trade the extremes. It just tells us that uh, maybe trading the extremes is for the more aggressive trader and not for the extremely risk averse trader. Back to current, we have a weak trend here, okay? That much is, is, is you can count on at this point because we have pure white space here and it would appear that uh, we have right here, you can barely see it, but that we have uh, um, a white space developing in the intermediate trend, okay? So we've also got an Adeo arrow here that's starting. We have real over oversold territory going on here, but you know I would be hesitant personally to trade that signal or to trade that condition you know to the long side because you just don't know what's going to happen. I know I have trend weakness. There's so many opportunities out there. Why not stick with what is strong, right? So the trend is either reversing or, or showing signs of going sideways. Now, you can see that what did develop is some very volatile activity to the upside. And that's very common when trends become toppy or you get towards the end. And again, this is a daily chart. Okay, It's not that you can't trade those extremes there and maybe there. Um, but you know, just know that your risk is higher and it might not be for people who are very risk averse. But if I'm sitting right here and I'm looking at this, uh, I'm not seeing much really strong trend indication for the past two or three months. A lot of choppy action in my indicator and my whole system down here. So I'm not feeling comfortable that this is going to break through this upper area of price and go higher. I'm just, you know, I'm not. Indeed, the, um, the trend ribbon has uh, turned bearish, and uh, that makes me very, very concerned. Okay. As we complete it, um, you can see that the trend does turn bearish, and it gave us some some indication of that before it actually completely rolled over. Okay. Uh, now, bear in mind, I'm going to be the first one to admit to you that I'm showing you fairly uh, perfect charts as good teaching examples at this point. Um, later in, in this, we're going to get to some live charts, and I'll show you a couple of messier ones, too, because real life, real trading is messy. It's, it's not completely clean like this. Now we're going to look at a three-day chart. The trend tool works on um, just about any time frame that you want to try it on. You can use it on daily, two days, three days, weekly charts, intraday, um, whatever really time frame you want. Uh, not on tick or anything like that, but uh, as you can see here, uh, you can trade these extremes profitably. Here's a weekly chart. I Drew up a couple of lines here to show a couple of points. The significance of the trend weakness starts to come into play in forecasting forward what you should want to look out for. You know, trend change is our biggest enemy. If you typically trade trends, um, you know, it really doesn't matter what your time frame is. If it's a swing trade, two to five days, or if you like to hold for two or three weeks or a couple of months. If you make a habit of trading with the trend, then trend change is your biggest enemy. Um, here, we've got some weakness. And that weakness is confirmed by price here. But the weakness is down here in, the term, in, in white space. But likewise, we start to show some strength, even though price doesn't turn up. We get a good uh, seven or eight days of swing filter where it's uh, it's bullish, so that should give someone um, more uh, more confidence to hop on this existing trend, uh, possibly with a relatively tight stop. Okay. 
And so this is a weekly chart, just to point out that you can apply it to a lot of different time frames. Here's a 60-minute chart. Characteristic of intraday charts, it's going to be a lot more noisy. And um, once again, what you want to do is to trade the extreme points. These are meta swing exit signals. We use them to exit trades and we use them to uh, form possible reversals as well. Okay, But here, we're showing exits to the top side, volatility shift with an exit there. And, and we know that, that with the trend system where it is, uh, we need to be looking at the downside. Here, trend switches back to uh, a more positive note and uh, feel more comfortable trading the extremes with uh, a bullish and going long. Okay? But intraday trading is particularly messy and uh, I personally do like to uh, make sure I have a good five, six, seven bars of solid uh, swing filter strength before I trade with a trend strictly on an intraday period, which it's not very often that I that I day trade, okay? Mostly I'm a swing trader, two to five periods, that sort of thing. Now, this is a topic I want to hit on tonight, and I don't want to um, put everybody to sleep, because when someone mentions statistics, you know, I know my eyes can start to glaze over, etc. But I think what is extremely important, and for all of us that want to really survive in the trading world, you know, we need to become a little more quantitative in what we do. And that is to use tools and methods that can be tested, but not only just tested, but tested in a statistically valid way. And that's what uh, I do here at my company. This is a document that everyone can have access to. It's a document that um, um, that that documents the the performance of the two mechanical systems that I'll show you tonight and it also completely outlines the methodology for how we do our statistically valid back testing you can get this document at metaswing.com and just click on this this symbol right here see the results and you'll download the document i'm going to be showing you pieces cut and pasted from that document here now, I'm going to take about a minute and a half here, no more, and I'm going to describe to you the methodology that we use when we test something because all the test results that I'm going to show you and the performance characteristics are derived from this. First thing we start out with is we test across a market neutral period. Okay? In this case, it's uh, October 1st, 2001 to 10:30, 2009. We test across the S&P 500 population of stocks, and we compare to market normal uh, against the S&P 500 index itself. Okay, so we do in-sample and out-of-sample backtesting. Okay, uh, might hit two there. Yeah, these are some performance metrics that show you how we do it. You can take some time when you download the document and read it more in depth. But we also do Monte Carlo simulation so that we can, um, we can know not only that a system is profitable, but what Monte Carlo does for you, it tells you what's the probability that it's going to be profitable for me as a trader. Okay, And then just to let you know, we try to conform to all the best practices as outlined in the texts of the Market Technicians Association. Okay, Two specific books come to mind, and that's um, new trading strategies uh, by Kaufman, and then uh, volatility, excuse me, um, evidence-based technical analysis by Aronson. Now, let's get back to that trend indicator. Here's three tests, and I wanted to test the strength of the MetaSwing trend system versus, you know, let's say a common method that people fall back on, which is is price above a 50-day moving average, for instance. So I said, you know, when people are trading an uptrend, what they'll typically do is they adjust an RSI and they'll they'll take a signal uh, when it crosses above 40 or 50. So I took 45, 
And this is a test that shows uh, when the RSI crosses above 45 in three different circumstances. One, when price is above 50-day moving average. Two, when price uses the uh, Metaswing trend ribbon that I showed you. And three, when the trend is bullish as well as the swing filter being bullish. And I even threw the uh, Metastock code to do that on this. Okay, So I conducted three tests. And this is how we test. We, we, we test every single trade, you know, and at the same time we take a corresponding trade concurrent in the S&P 500 index. This is the only way to compare statistically to know if your signal, if you will, your set of mechanical rules outperforms the actual market. So let's start down here at the bottom with a uh, 50-day moving average in the RSI going above 45. It generated 11,598 trades in the S&P 500 population over eight years in a market neutral time frame. Okay, It did outperform the market. That's the, uh, the signal strength, uh, signal performance is there. Now this right here says that the profile of the performance is by day going forward for 20 days. That's what this uh, bottom axis means. Okay, On day one, there's your profit. On day two, there's your average mean profit. Day three, etc. Okay, So we, we, we come up with a profile that goes out for 20 days. Okay, The purpose of this is to see you know, how well does the uh, Metaswing trend system do. Okay. In all three instances they beat the market. Okay. Now let's go to the next page and I plotted all three of the system performances on the same chart so that we can compare. Initially the swing trend uh, method, the one that was plotted at the top on the previous page, performs best and it initially performs well right out of the box. In other words market is right for a quick swing okay and that's why we use it on the mechanical systems that I'm going to show you in a little bit then something interesting happens by day 10 we start to see real overperformance with the Metaswing uh, trend system that overperformance when we compare the swing filter to the 50-day moving average and I'd be willing to stake that most moving average types of trend measurements are going to come up like this. They're going to they're going to be down here somewhere. Uh, I've looked at a lot of them. You know, 20, 10 period moving average crossing the, the 50, the 25 crossing the, the 60, and, and there's no end to the combinations. But a funny thing happens once we get to around day 10, which is right about in here, we start to significantly overperform most trend measurement systems that I've ever seen to the point where we get up to day 15 in here and we're 30 and 35 percent better than most common ways of measuring trend and I must say that measuring trend on an objective basis is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to develop it really is um, seeing a trend is easy but forecasting forward that there's a lack of trend, that's the hard part. Trading ranges are difficult to predict. Trends um, are not as hard to predict, not as hard to sense through math because an object in motion tends to remain in motion. Um, and so, you know, that's what's difficult. And that's why testing in this way, taking a sample trade and following it all the way forward for 20 periods, is, uh, is just absolutely invaluable if you want to know if, if the tools that you're using actually work and actually work compared to an identical trade on the exact same days as the market. Okay, So this is the type of testing that's what we call statistically valid. And that's the Metaswing trend indication system. Okay, Intermediate trend over short-term 
trend strength. Okay. And that's how that basically works. Um, I guess I could see if anyone has a couple of, we could take a couple of questions at this point before we get into the mechanical systems. If anyone has any, uh, I'd be happy to answer anything. And uh, what is this? This is HG, I forget. Is that copper? I forget. Um, it's, it's one of those futures. At any rate, okay, well, let's move forward then. The next thing I'm going to show you is the first of two mechanical trading systems that we developed for MetaSwing. Prior to version 4, MetaSwing was a series of tools designed to do the things that I had mentioned earlier. Trend, directional signals, trend compensated, overbought and oversold, uh, volatility based support and resistance. And now with MetaSwing 4 we've added uh, simplicity of mechanical trading systems. Okay, Both of them are long systems and uh, we have complete documentation on performance going back um, I don't know, 15, 18 years, something like that. The rules are kept very simple. This is a long side system. It is based basically for end of day traders. Okay. Here's an example, a teaching example right here of a trade. At the end of the day, you receive a signal. It says buy. Pretty simple. In the system, you go long at the open of the following day. Then, on day five, on trade day five, one, two, three, four, and then five, you're going to exit at the close. And that's the system. Okay? Uh, I use, and this is not a plug for them, I'm not, um, I'm not compensated in any way by them or anything, I have no relationship with them, but I use interactive brokers. And when I want a market on open order, I just about always get filled at the open price. And that works for me. When I'm comfortable with the market, uh, I'll go for the market on open. Okay? I'll enter at the open and then follow it on up. Okay? Or sideways or whichever way it goes. And then on the closing day, if you really want to strictly system trade this, you can use a market on close order. Okay? And that way you'll be doing exactly the exact system that uh, is in these rules here. Okay. Sometimes the trade will be extended for a few more days. Because of the extension, the average trade length is about six days on average. Most trades are five days. Okay. Your stop level is two ATRs below this open, and your your target to close prior to five days is three ATRs somewhere up here above. Both of those areas, two ATRs below and three ATRs above, seldom get reached. Sometimes they do, but most of the time you're going to be entering and exiting like I described. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the historical performance, but if you download the uh, Metaswing Systems Performance document like I showed you earlier, You'll get that, and it's a PDF, and there's a live link in it. If you're the type to want to perform statistical analysis and uh, analyze all those trades yourself, you're welcome to. You can download it. It's a very large file. Uh, you can download it directly from uh, my website. It's an Excel file. You can do, you do your own analysis statistically, and you can email me. You'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Okay, let's go on and look at some more examples. This is a pure example. This is a daily chart. We get a signal and we get a sell. It doesn't work any better than this. Okay? They don't all go that way. I wish they did. Uh, if they did, I'd probably be uh, sitting in Hawaii right now. Now, um, here's a couple of more examples. Oh, this is an example of when the trade gets extended. So you get a signal this day. You enter the day after. Trade doesn't go all that great, but the conditions are still good, and so um, the trade gets extended. Okay, and uh, you exit that day. This trade doesn't make any money; actually, loses a percent. 
or two, you know. This one over here does make some money. Let's see, a question from Rental. Um, if you get the buy signal on Wednesday, do you still keep it for the weekend until it reaches the fifth day? The answer to that question is yes. You're staying in for five days. Uh, you hold uh, through the weekend. Okay. Now, I'm not above anybody ever um, overriding this sort of a system. I do it occasionally myself because of certain fundamental market um, conditions. Um, you know, fundamental conditions and changes trump technical signals almost all the time. Uh, it's just difficult knowing what is really significant. The situation in Japan uh, a month ago, um, and my heart goes out to the people suffering from that, but from a market perspective, that just scared the heck out of me because of potential. And uh, it kept me out of the market for a little while, even though I had really, really good signals. And so, you know, uh, sometimes that protects me, sometimes it doesn't. As traders, we all have those decisions to make. Now, there is a combinatory window. Here, I've brought it up, and the commentary is focused right over the buy day. And it'll tell you there's a buy signal. It tells you what the uh, average true ranges are. The next day, once the open is established, it will tell you where to put your stops. Okay, the uh, entry and the price target, 1286. Uh, put a limit order in there, and uh, if you're so inclined, put a uh, a stop order at uh, 968 with a one cancels all. Okay. And then as you walk through, now we're on the last day, and you can see that it's telling you to get out of the trade. Uh, it's time to uh, exit on the close of the bar. And it's just that simple. So we tried to keep it simple, but we tried to make it better, both at the same time. Once again, here's another one. Um, let's see, I think this is a daily. Now, I will use this signal on daily charts, two-day charts, and three-day charts. Those are the time frames I'm comfortable with. I have absolute quantitative um, testing on daily charts. That's what I have the ability to test on. I have not tested uh, two-day and three-day charts. However, my experience with it so far makes me comfortable with putting my own money in on two- and three-day signals when I see them. Now, another way to trade it is if you want to change it a little bit. If you want to be involved on an intraday basis, okay? The signal we just saw, NetEase, shows an, uh, a buy signal on this day and an entry the following day. Now, this chart is a 15-minute uh, chart, I believe, of that same thing. So we have the buy signal showing up on this day with an entry on this day. And actually the entry is right there. Okay. However, if you're one that, you know, really wants to see a little bit of confirmation before you buy something that looks like almost a falling knife, and I have to tell you that if you're one to really, really trade extremes, a lot of trades feel like you're trying to catch a falling knife. Uh, to a certain degree. Um, now when we test these things, we're testing good, bad, and ugly. We're testing trades that we wouldn't even take uh, because we have no way of screening out for fundamentals. So uh, before I take a trade, I look and see, hey, is, is this a broken stock? Uh, did they just do something? Were they, were they just denied uh, a new drug uh, approval or something like that? And uh, I ignore those. I, I don't try to try to second guess strong fundamental data like that. But our back testing includes all those things. So I think you can always improve what it is that we test on. In this case, if you're an intraday trader and you prefer to have some confirmation before you you trade, then this would be the way a way to do it. Instead of entering the way the system tells you right here at point one, you could look for the, the trend uh, 
ribbon to show some weakness in this obvious downtrend that you see here. Look for it to show some weakness, maybe the day after the original uh, entry. And wait for that uh, trend ribbon to go white enough so that you're comfortable. Okay, uh, Maybe an entry in here, or possibly right towards the end of the day when the intermediate turns, uh, turns green. The next day we do get a reversal. You may want to wait until that day with, um, with some positive uh, trading. The uh, price pushes the 15 minute end band and trades up into the support resistance line. I mean, that, that is uh, a real confirmation of a short term reversal for me. That's one of the things that I use. Okay? I like to look at 15 minute charts uh, for confirmation if I feel like I want it that bad. Okay? So this is one way you can do it. Now, remember that confirmation always carries a price because you miss out on some of the trade. On the flip side of the coin, maybe you're missing out on this price continuing to go down and down for two or three more days. So who's to say that uh, you won't improve it? One thing you know is that with good, solid, um, statistically valid backtesting, you know what the system baseline performance is. It is this open to a five day close. So you know what the baseline performance is. If you can start making changes based on some of the things that you know how to do or you feel comfortable with and you are consistently beating the close at the fifth day, then yeah, you can improve the system. But if you're not, then maybe you should start to trade this system as though you were a human computer and really trade a system system. Okay? Um, it just depends on the makeup that you have. Are you comfortable with that? Sometimes I'm very comfortable being a system trader. Sometimes with market conditions, uh, I, I'm, I'm really not. So, just to let you know. Now here's a busy chart. Here is uh, the Adeo Long system on a two-day chart. And usually you don't see this many signals. Uh, some of them make money. This one was, does not. That one does. Uh, this one doesn't. The one right after it does. And this one does. Okay. Uh, another two day chart, etc. Let's look at the performance. Once again, we. Um, we did a large number test. This is important right here. Sample size equals population. So we're testing every single a day long system trade in the S&P 500 in that date range. Completely market neutral date range. We had two bears and two bulls, two presidential cycles, um, eight years, and a little over 3,500 trades. Okay, and uh, with the performance of it, that gives you the law of large numbers on your side. Also, we're not taking a statistical sample of the population of the trades in the S&P 500. We're taking all of them. So 3,500 trades over those eight years produce performance that looks like this. Okay, the sweet spot is here around day five, and that's why the system calls for that. You can continue to hold. If your normal trends methodology has you in for two, three, four weeks, then by all means continue to hold on. Okay? Your highest gain per day with this system comes at day five, and that's why the system tells you to get out. Okay? Also, there's a definite market overperformance. Now this isn't alpha, but this is really the stuff that alpha is made of. All this distance in here when the market over when it overperforms the broader market. It definitely beats the, the broad market during the days that it's being uh, traded. Okay. Got a question here. Uh, Tony, I did not see a buy or sell signals on the 15 minute chart that actually said buy or sell. Now you're only going to see the buy and sell signals on the daily chart. And then if you want to drill into the 15 minute chart to find uh, trend, comp trend uh, confirmation, then uh, you can do that. That was just the methodology that I was showing for that particular example. Okay, so we have a situation here where we have um, solid backtesting results 
over a market uh, neutral period. Now let's go forward with some other test results. This is where we get into the in-sample, out-of-sample uh, testing. This is how the system tested individually over all these years since 1993. But first, let's look at how it tested again across the eight-year market neutral period. This is a Monte Carlo simulation. And what this does is it statistically, or, or I don't know if that's the right word to use here, but it takes a true statistical sample um, 10,000 times of 10 back-to-back -back trades. Okay? The individual win-loss per trade on a trade-by-trade -trade basis is about 64% win, 36% loss. But the proper way to test a system is not on a single trade-by-trade -trade basis. It is on a series of trades. In that case, we test, we take 10 successive back-to-back -back trades. So you turn your money over 10 times. Okay? You might do that across four or five different positions. But you're turning your money over 10 times. And we're using that as a baseline to test the system. Okay? So if 64.35 is the win-loss on a single trade-by-trade -trade basis, once you've made 10 trades, okay, and we run that through the Monte Carlo simulation, your actual probability of gain after 10 successive trades increases to 76%. Probability of loss is 23%. That means that the winners are proportionately larger than the losers. And you can only see that through compounding, okay, where you're doing 10 successive trades. It's the same, it's kind of the same principle that goes into something called a geometric mean, okay. Uh, if you look at it on a non compounded basis, 10 uh, simple trades back to back, if you average them, you get 13.3%. Uh, that's, that's the typical outcome across an eight year period of time on those 3,500 individual trades. And what it does is a Monte Carlo simulation does a 10,000 iteration sampling of those 3,500 trades. It figures out what is your probability of achieving these mean results. It does that through plotting something called a distribution histogram. Okay, so that you can see what is the distribution of the results through a true random sampling. Okay, uh, the zero lines right in here somewhere, right about there. Most of all the trades were profitable. You could potentially end up with systems that have only a few profitable trades, but those trades are huge and all the rest are losers. Okay? You should know the profile of a system that you're trading, a distribution, if you will, of a system that you're trading. Because not everybody's set up psychologically, emotionally, to trade a system that would perform that way. I know I'm not. It would just be you know, I don't have the psychological makeup. I want more winners than losers. And I feel like it gives me a little bit more um, safety, if you will. My risk is more controlled. Okay? Um, but this is the, the, the statistical distribution of the returns of 10 back-to-back -back successive trades. Okay? If you looked at it on a compounded basis, that's about 14.1% across the eight-year period of time, a market-neutral period of time. If you test a long system only when the market's going up, it's probably going to work. But if you trust in bull and bear markets, that's when you get a fair estimate of the performance of a system. And in this case, um, I won't get into this because it'll really put you to sleep, the skewness and kurtosis is de that describes the uh, distribution is histogram. This was done across 3,514 trades, all of the MetaSwing uh, the day long system trades that occurred across the S&P 500 population of stocks. Now there's a lot more trades in that uh, because the market consists of more than 500 stocks. Okay. Now as we see these figures here as a simple mean, okay, this is how it broke out 
in the years 1993 through last year 2010 and that number is here it's right before this gap right here you'll follow these numbers all the way across you can see how the system performed in the years above it as luck would have it it had about its worst year last year and that really wasn't due to anything it was the fault of the system it was due to the profile of five-day trades during uh, a relatively tough swing trading year last year the other system we'll look at in a moment the uh, one two three long system uh, fared out much better last year but this had better years uh, the previous which is why I like to trade both systems uh, at different times of the market okay so this is the in sample from a statistician standpoint and this is what's called the out of sample okay individual years and the quantity of trades that were shown in each of those years okay moving forward to, to conserve time you can find signals through MetaSwing by running the MSW4 system exploration against your local database using the Explorer icon. Okay? You can also go to metaswing.com and download the daily report. It's a pre-formatted uh, Excel sheet report that's usually posted by before 7 p.m. in the evening. This way you don't have to run it yourself. But it's just run on the U.S. population of American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and NYSE. Okay? Because um, this system is primarily for stock trading. Okay? That report looks like this. Uh, you'll download it. There's multiple tabs at the bottom. On this tab, you'll find all of our discretionary signals. What an MSW4 system tab, you will find the... Uh, trading signals on a daily basis for the MSW a day long and the MSW 4123 long okay it'll show you how many days since how many trading sessions since the condition was true okay so on day 0 those are the signals showing up that day this is a very recent report this was from last friday and you can see that typically uh, when the market is not conducive to swing trading you won't get very many signals and that's one of the strengths of this particular type of system it will help to keep you out of the market when conditions are not quite right for swing trading and it's proven that over the years now if I scroll down that report we can see that 16 and 17 trading days previous to last Friday which was April 8th the market was much more ripe for trading swing trading okay swing signals five day swing trades and actually down here I just put a snippet of the NASDAQ composite and the days that we're looking at here 16 days prior to last Friday 17 18 that's when the NASDAQ composite and the S&P looked a lot like this too took a downtrend and it recommended an awful lot of trades and got you in and Frankly, this system really cleaned up for about a week, okay? Uh, but, but understand that right here, this was the height of the fear of what was happening in the market, okay? There was a lot of risk coming out of the market on these days during uh, March. And, you know, frankly, it took a little guts to hop long right here, okay? So some of the um, method that I showed you for using confirmation on an intraday basis, you may want to use. Or you may just like system trading and trade it blindly. Um, but nonetheless, this is what the market looked like. And the system produces a lot more signals when the trading is good. Okay. As a result, the way that you should trade this system is when you have more signals here, okay, you should trade more positions and allocate more of your trading capital to trading this system. When you really get a lot of signals, then you may want to uh, use margin. If you have a tendency to use margin, you want to make sure that it's at a time when you have a lot of signals because that's when the system performs best. Okay, That's one of the guidelines. There are other best practices for using the uh, Adeo Long system, but those are the basics.
okay? And it is a very simple system. Also, there are videos. Uh, this one's just a recap of what you're seeing tonight, maybe a little shorter. But there's an in-depth trading training video on the Adeo Long System at our website, as well as on the 123 Long System that I'm about to show you, and the trend tools. Now let's hop into the 123 Long System. The 123 Long System uses MetaSwing's volatility-based support and resistance lines. And it too is a relatively simple system for end of day trading. When price is in an upswing, as confirmed by the um, trend indication here, and there's a close above a support resistance line, followed by a close below that support and resistance line, then there's a high probability as a mechanical system that you'll be able to make money if you enter at the lower support line and exit at the resistance line above it. Okay? Once again, price closes above, then below one of the upper SR lines. Once you get a signal, then place a limit order at the lower SR line. Once that picks up, you place a limit order at the upper XL, at the upper uh, SR line. And that's the system. It's pretty much just that simple. Once again, you use about a two ATR stop. Okay, it is seldom reached, but sometimes it is. But that's system trading. Okay, and there are specific rules in the user guide as well as the um, the, uh, the testing guide that you can download. Here's an example. Uh, let's see, right here. We go to a one two three signal. We have an order in the next day at that line. It picks up several days later and then executes there. Okay? That's a, uh, a uh, one, two, three trade. Okay? Once again, here we get a signal the next day, executes, executes. Here's one. Sometimes they don't pick up. We get a signal, but price never pulls back far enough to where you would put your order in. Okay, here's another example. Where we have a 1, 2, 3 here that actually picks up on the fifth day. And then executes five days after that. Okay. You hold your limit order for five days. It doesn't pick up, you cancel it. That's the rule. You hold your target order for five days. If that doesn't pick up, then you, you close it out on the fifth day. That's the one, two, three system. So here we got the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Uh, you actually end up taking a loss on this one and you exit the fifth day at the close right there. Okay? But such is life, such is trading. But it's relatively simple and it exploits a trend with support and resistance lines. Now, its performance. Here's its performance. It's not quite as strong um, on the whole. However, the trade typically only lasts about three and a half days. This tested 1,300, about 1,400 trades. Okay. There's the regular broad market um, performance. Um, let's see. Hi, Karen. Nice to have you. And this is the system performance. So we have definite uh, market overperformance. Okay. And the sweet spot is right there, about three days. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily use one, two, threes to join trends. I think there's better ways to join trends. Um, I would use the Adeo Long more for that. Um, what I would do, though, is take advantage of the actual system the way it's written, because if you look at it, uh, a trade that lasts over, you know, three and a third, three and a half days, it actually makes about the same amount per day as the Adeo Long system that I showed you earlier. So it's really equally as profitable. And here's the key, too. 
This occurs at times when you don't get a strong pullback in the trend. So, you know, when price is climbing the, the wall of worry in a trending environment like we've seen, you know, over the last uh, six to nine months, you go through periods of time where you don't get strong pullbacks to enter trends and do a swing trade. And it, it can be frustrating, right? Um, one, two, threes are good for those periods because individual stocks, after all, it is a market of stocks. Individual stocks are doing a lot of small gyrations and small trading. And one, two, three trades are good for those periods of time. Okay? So I tend to mix it up. Sometimes I'm doing a day of long trades and sometimes I'm doing one, two, three trades, depending on market conditions. Okay? So we have performance. And then we have uh, Monte Carlo performance. Uh, 10 successive back-to-back -back trades across that same market neutral period of time give us a simple performance of 8.7%, okay? But the average trade is only 3.36 days, so the actual profit per day is about equal to the system that I was showing you a little while ago. And here's the performance across... Uh, so, well, since 1994, uh, 10 successive trades. These are not, by the way, this is not annual system performance because it really can't be tested that way. It depends on how much you trade, okay? I think you can, you know, if you're extremely active, you can get 25, maybe more back-to-back -back trades in these systems in a year, or maybe a little less in the one, two, three than you can in the... Uh, a day or long. If you're a relatively inactive trader, then I think you can do 10 in a year, you know, if you really trade lightly. But if you're moderately, you're going to get between 10 and 20 back-to-back -back trades in these systems a year, which would lend itself to some pretty good performance for a risk-managed system, if you will. Risk-managed in the point that the out of uh, the out of market, the out of system uh, performance has been good, just out of sample performance. Last year, 8.2% uh, for 10 back-to-back -back trades in the 1, 2, 3s. Uh, and the S&P 500 had 185 of them. Broad market would have been a whole lot more. Okay. So for a system that has a deep history, uh, and, and also like the, the Adeo Long system I showed you a while ago, the out of, the out of, um, out of system performance here, there's not a losing year. There's no negative numbers here. Okay? Just like the uh, Adeo Long system had. Um, so, 10 back to back trades has a tendency to give you a high probability that you're not going to lose money. Okay? And that's what it's all about safety and risk management. There's the distribution histogram for this particular uh, system over the eight years. 76% chance of um, probability, I should say, not chance, but probability of being uh, profitable uh, after 10 trades back to back. And that's how we do proper back testing here. And again, I never uh, fail to get a plug in for my book. So if you ever want it, it's online at Amazon.com and other online booksellers. Um, what questions can I answer for you about these systems at this point? Um, we can also take this time and I can share my screen and we can uh, take requests and do a uh, live, uh, live uh, screen sharing so we can bring up live charts, which is what I will uh, attempt to do right now. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share my uh, computer screen. Bear with me just a minute. Okay, can everybody confirm to me that you're looking at a uh, meta stock and a chart? Anyone tell me that that's what's coming through?
No? Okay, let me... Uh, can everyone see it uh, now? Yes? Okay. All right, then I'm going to resize it so I can still see your questions. There we go. Okay. It was on the wrong monitor. Let's bring up uh, US uh, FCX. I'm sorry, Kirk. I, I hit the wrong button, and you need to reshare your screen. Okay, this is the... Uh-oh. Uh Looks like nobody's looking at it again. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I can do that. Uh, I had it to where it would um, share the application. It was working before. You know how to do that, uh, Jeff? Kirk, when you had it sharing your dot, the, your uh, your screen. Um, if you want, you can uh, do share application, but I would just share the desktop. That generally seems to work a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that then. All right, except that I can't see uh, everybody's uh, stuff right now. Okay, can everybody see the chart now? Yes? Okay. All right, so here is uh, FCX. Someone wanted to see FCX. We have a series of one, two, three trades here. Okay, you can follow my mouse pointer. We have uh, an Adeo long system trade here that made a little bit. And some one, two, three trades that, frankly, the trend was too strong and didn't pick up. This one picked up right there and would have executed five days later there. Okay. Um, and here's one right now. We'll see how that turns out in a couple of days over here to the right. Uh, what else would someone like to look at? Any particular stocks or something? Let's see. I had, uh, had Amazon up on a three-day chart here. Hey, there you go, Amazon. Um, this is Amazon on a three-day chart. We have oh, an Adeo long system signal here on a three-day. Got them here. Didn't make any money. Here we made some money. Um, pretty much consistent with the statistics of the back testing. Uh, we'll switch back to a daily chart. We got a bunch of symbols that came by here. Uh, S bucks. All right. Starbucks. We have a one, two, three here that uh, would. I'm not sure. I can't. Really count it all. It might not have. It might have stopped out uh, from a standpoint, timed out. I uh, probably would have picked up on this day. What did it up? Yeah, that one would have timed out and not made any money. This one over here did just fine for a one, two, three. And the other directional signals are relatively reliable. There's uh, there's uh, an a day of short. Um, suggestion, but uh, the trend tool told you when things change, so you didn't lose too much, but the longs here, the trend following, work out well. And, uh, okay, next, COP. And here we are with COP. Uh, we have we have two back-to-back -back successful uh, one, two, three trades. We have a slightly extended, very profitable day of long trade there. And then, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, the system really killed it. Uh, that was great. We had some really good stuff going on here in March. And uh, so that worked out well. Um, let's see. FLAC. Okay. 
Oops. Can I get that? What's the symbol for AFLAC? Because um, AFLC, A, AFL? Yeah, AFL, okay. AFLAC. Uh, somebody running over the goose here? Right about there, somebody ran over the goose in March. Um, I think that was all their Japan exposure. Um, there's one, two, three that does not pick up there. Um, nothing much else on a system trade. You can see here the, um, I'm going to go to crosshairs. You can see here the usefulness of the trend tool um, lining up with my crosshairs here is we get trend weakness. It forecasts uh, and, and lets you know that maybe you should take some of your position off or get out of that one and find something better because it definitely shows here that trend is weak and sure enough it rolls over. Same thing right here. Um, we've got a downtrend and uh, the trend though from a bearish standpoint is starting to get weak and it develops back up into a, long, a longer trend and, uh, and so on and so forth. We get a little weakness here. It doesn't really forecast that much so there's not that much value to it but here we can see where uh, trading is not too good going forward for a few weeks after this weakness. Um, no tools are perfect in the market. You just uh, you got to roll with it. Uh, foreign exchange. Okay, let's go um, from that dollar sign, dollar sign. Um, USD, JPY. Before I do that, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to apply a different template for foreign exchange. Uh, I'm going to do the intraday template. Okay, now. Dollar sign, dollar sign, oops, sorry. There we are. Pretty much we're going to look at the uh, discretionary signals that we have and the trend signals for um, FX trading. This is uh, daily here. I know a lot of FX trading takes place on an hourly basis um, and intraday charts. As you can see the, the significance of the extreme readings and the exits and the DAO signals here with the trend. Okay. Um, I won't get into all the training things about these signals, but they identify extremes and their setups for trades, for discretionary trades. That's the best way to look at it. Uh, let's see. This one is custom. No, I don't have it there. I'm going to. Try and switch this to hourly. And we're going to see how that comes up. And change the tolerances there. And let's bring up this. This is an hourly chart. You can see the extremes being identified here and here on foreign exchange. The exit signals I love when people trade foreign exchange. I talk with customers. I don't trade foreign exchange myself, but other but a lot of customers really do like it, you know. So uh, that works well. Um what else would someone like to uh, like to see? Which other tools, which other um, symbols if you will? Anyone else? There's uh, McKesson. Okay. I am going to. Yeah, it's still in place. 
I'm guessing we have no signal signals right there. I'm going to pan back a ways and see what comes up. Our DAOs are fairly accurate on McKesson as well as the exit signals. And there's a, um, a DAO system signal there that loses some money. And there's one over here that about breaks even. Not a lot going on with McKesson. Um, anyone else? If I come up with signals, uh, then it's not uh, impartial. Yes, J A S O. Uh, J A Solar. I love J A Solar. Here is. And a day long symbol signal looks like it makes about three or four percent back uh, in October of last year. Here's another one for five, six percent. I think I traded this one right here in August. I think I think I did that one and did well. Yeah. This you know this kind of shows the performance of that twenty day wave I was telling you I was showing you the twenty day performance. And there's a reason why the system has a sweet spot of five days. Like this sell point right here is on day five. And you get some downturn after that before the market continues up. That's a natural wave, if you will, that we see in markets. You know, sometimes it you call the top, sometimes it goes up for three or four more days and then turns down. But you, know, you definitely get waves in these things. Okay? Um, so and there we go. Here's another one. Um, let me go back a ways. Here's one that uh, was not fun. We lost some money there. Okay. Uh, bought on the way down, Mr. Falling Knife. I don't know. Maybe there was something going on with that. Maybe it was a bad earnings report. Who knows? I personally don't trade through earnings holdings. So here's another one over here that did pretty well because you entered there. On that day at uh, five dollars and seventy four cents, you sell at six dollars and thirty cents. So you know that's pretty good if you uh, you got plenty of liquidity in this in this stock right here. Someone else says open. Okay. Open table. Uh, here we go. A friend of mine talked me into trading this the other day, even though I didn't have a signal. Uh, I actually made a little bit of money on it, but not much. It lasted about a day and a half. Uh, don't have any signals there, but we have a lot of trend performance here following it up. We get a good two weeks of white space right here, and that does a fairly good, good job of telling us you know, that there's trend weakness. Going forward, we see a sideways trading range for a while before the trend really resumes up. We see strength right in here for about two weeks before the trend actually begins to uh, resume its pace on up. Okay, um, so there you go. I'll back this up a little bit. Well, don't have a lot of history there, do we? Uh, text. Um, yes. No, I don't know what text is. Um, anyone else? Another um, symbol? Like I said, if I choose it, I can't be uh, so uh, COP. Can't be really impartial. Did we look at this one already? I know. I think I looked at it earlier today. That's the reason why it looks familiar. Here's Conoco Phillips. Um, we had a really good market uh, in mid-March, like I told you, with that pullback. Then we had a good trade here in at 59.30, out at 62.03. And I don't know if that was an earnings period or not. Um, we could go back a little further. Uh, we have some... We have two 
successful no well theoretically we have two successful one two three trades here I'm not sure about this one here looks pretty weird um we have a lot of ADEO signals here there's a lot that I could tell you about using MetaSwing with its support and resistance um, and I would love to but we simply do not have time to get into it tonight I have videos about the support and resistance tools at metaswing.com and I encourage you to look at them because um, this is unique. I write an internal blog for the members of the Market Technicians Association. There are five of us inside the MTA that do blogs and I specialize in volatility based support and resistance and it's my specialty. I'm a, I'm a recognized expert on it. I guess mostly because I pretty much invented it. Um, I don't claim to have invented volatility or analysis based on it, but support and resistance um, uh, and, and a couple of key concepts around it are something that uh, I was the pioneer on. Let's go back forward and look at GE. Here is yeah, about a break-even trade right there because you're entering there exiting there. Um, a lot of ADEO signals here for short-term trades. Um, here we had good trend strength going into this so one could make a case just to go along there for a swing trade. But we had trend weakness here. We get into here and we have a lot of trend strength and then you get that slow creep upwards that we all love to love and hate at the same time. Unless, of course, we've been in it for a few weeks, then we love it. Let's back up a ways. Here, um, I want to point out the exit symbols for MetaSwing. They can be used as reversal symbols with the trend as well. They just come up with or signal a completely different way than the ADEO arrows that you see. Okay, They use a completely different methodology for coming up with their signal. They're quite good at telling you when the trade is over in a certain, in a certain direction. Here it says, okay, the upswing for a period of time is over. You know? Um, you know, for the next five, six periods, you're not going to see much. So you might as well take some off the table and re-enter at a better point if you want to trade the trend. Here's GE during the crash, and the uh, trend system worked excellently during the crash, but that's not really when you need it to work, is it? I said a trend is fairly obvious. The um, lack of trend is what's really difficult. And I'll leave it still now. Here we had somewhat of an uptrend, and then that slow rolling over that occurred in 2007. Trend tools worked pretty well then. You could solidly identify the direction. We'll book this forward. Let's take a look at it in a different time frame. Uh, we can try a three day chart. See what comes up. And opportunities you don't see get produced in other time frames. If you're just used to looking at daily charts, you miss really good opportunities quite frequently. Here is a slight loss, but a slightly better gain in two system uh, trades in the Deo long system. And looks like a 1, 2, 3 picks up there and never picks up here. So we have a successful 1, 2, 3 trade. I would very much um, love to go on for the rest of the evening, but um, I'm afraid I must call the end of the meeting now and take any final questions that someone has about uh, MetaSwing. I want to encourage you to try MetaSwing. The trial is a 30-day free trial at MetaStock's website, and you can download it and install it directly into MetaStock. Um, I think you'll like what you find. 30 days, mm, you know, that's a, 
a good little test period, but, um, you know, uh, sometimes you may want to go for a little longer, whichever. Um, but I encourage you to try it. I really do. It, uh, it is statistically proven. It is sound. And uh, a lot of people have been using it. We've had a lot of people during 2010 convert their monthly MetaSwing subscriptions to annual subscriptions. It really surprised me how many people did that because they just decided to keep keep uh, using it, keep uh, trading it, etc. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback on it. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can't get it at the site. Jeff says yes. That's true. Just call the 800 number and they'll they'll set you up for that. Um, the good folks there will be happy to get you up and running quickly. Um, let's see. Well, thanks to everyone for attending. I think we had pretty much a full room tonight. And uh, I look forward to taking any questions from you. You can reach me anytime, Kirk at metaswing.com. And, uh, you know, that'll take care of it. Once again, Kirk at metaswing.com.